Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video and the free product. You're not getting your car back. I know you shouldn't swear, but this is not the but fun. Yeah. Oh my God. I could drive this all day. So I'm in a bit of a predicament. <laughs> Try to road trip this car cross country. I want to save these Mickey Thompson ET drags, not for highway use. If I can get these tires swapped, there's a good chance I can take this car back to California the hard way. You guys at Bell Tire are just saving my ass. Help me swap onto these tires that can handle the rain. Bouncing away. We're doing an alignment, which is badly needed. That's interesting. It's cool that thing that just tells you all this. Just him spinning with the, the wheels. You can see the numbers dropping. I guess he's tightening the bars. It's, just, it's so neat to see, because like I do all this with string. They look like vintage race car tires. It's actually kind of funny. This is the AutoZone O'Reilly Special, and we have got <laughs> a hilarious combination of things. I've never worked on an exhaust, especially on this nice of a car. Uh, with this shitty of material. We're clamping from three inch down to two and a half. This is looking good to get the sound and the exhaust out the back of the car. But we've gone through a lot of different issues with this. One of them is actually, you can see the little bit of residue there. That donut is what seals the tank to this. As soon as it starts to fill up to right there, it just starts pouring over out the side of the tank. So anytime I go at a gas station, I can tell when I'm full because it starts leaking. Got a couple other major issues. This bounces because there was nothing supporting these. And so you get going just the right frequency and it would start hitting the U-joint, which would push it down and keep it going. It was annoying. Uh, I tightened up all the fuel lines. They were all slightly loose and leaking, which is great. Going through all the bolts. The Korea 1 stuff is just nuts. It just works so damn well. It's not even funny. They got that all, all aligned. And uh, of course, obviously the Dodge stuff is brand new. Thanks to FedEx, but more importantly to Summit for getting me all my parts overnight. Like a normal customer, paid $70 in shipping, but I have a Saturday delivery and we can get this car ready to go. The gas tank thing is one piece that should be in here. And then some of the parts for the AC. And so we'll see just what made it here. A little PSA is if you have this style of lug, which is, is a drag racing style that can be serviced, if um, you're not paying attention and try to tighten the wheel and you notice that one of them are no longer at the same length as the others, it's not shorter, it's backing out and then it becomes a bowling ball and a pin full of <laughs> drum brakes. It trashed everything inside of there. And then it really, it didn't do all this, but what it did was it broke like probably this part off and then this part got wedged. You wouldn't really notice. You'd be, oh, that's weird. They're just different lengths. They're not. That's that's just a, a bowling pin of destruction. What I'm gonna do is lock tight them, tighten them back up, and then put them on kind of like that one final time before the road trip. But you can see, you know, just if you have that style, you're probably smarter than me as a drag racer, but uh, as a street car, that, can be a problem. Yeah, this process has been rather, rather cumbersome. <laughs> yeah, insane. This is not my best work. But I think it's ready to pressurize. So yeah, so I've tightened all the fittings, all the O-rings. I just have the uh, condenser sitting on the main crankshaft pulley. So, you know, it's behind the radiator, but we'll see. I got guard books in the background. <laughs> it's holding pressure going into the system even with this maze. While we were out trying to conquer a mountain, the cat was in its summer shed. <laughs> and with all that hair, you know what that means to me. I've been giving her keeps, no, just kidding. That cat has what I wish I had, which is thick hair. And thanks to keeps, uh, you know, I get the, the, the fullness, the hair follicles are much thicker and the density that I would want as a human, not as a cat. Keeps helps uh, maintain and promote the growth of new hair where you have a full head of hair, you know, that's what you dream of. And especially when you start off younger like I did, by the time I was 30, I prevented a lot of receding. You can still see, you know, traditional aging still happening, but I'm 40 something years old now, and uh, I'm very thankful for having my hair. And that is certainly thanks to Keeps. Two out of every three men actually end up experiencing some form of male pattern baldness 
by the age of 35, and like I said, I, the writing was on the wall for me. Love my dad to death, but he and my, my grandpa on my mom's side weren't setting me up for good averages. So thanks to Keeps, genetics weren't the only thing at play preventing that hair from disappearing. Everything that you're wondering, that you, that's that been uncertain, you see a forum post and some somebody says this and somebody says that, don't worry about it. Go to Keeps' website, it's all there. They have a variety of solutions. They have a lot of approaches that fit your lifestyle on maintaining your head of hair. So as always, thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video and for the free product. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get up to 50% off a three month plan, Go to keeps.com slash robdom. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash robdom. There comes a time in every man's life where he has to take a road trip, and this is my moment. Actually, it's my dad and I's moment. <laughs> and we are going to take this car from here in Michigan all of the way to California. That's 2,250 miles uh, and quite a few hours, 37 hours if you were to drive it straight. We have not drag tires. They're still very bouncy tires, but they are radial tires with grooves to uh, endure rain uh, all the way around. Still have the Mickey Thompson street strips in the front. We've got air conditioning working. We have uh, the brakes working. <laughs> uh, we have all the amenities that you would dream of on a Vesto mod, including a cell phone holder, and a USB charger for your phone. And as we go through the desert and the hotter areas, we'll uh, see the limits of what it can do. But we have a trunk full of spares and supplies, kind of stuff that, including, uh, you know, an overdrive, underdrive pulleys and injectors, ethanol sensors. So we could halfway through here, uh, make it a thousand horsepower. <laughs> so we are beginning our trip first thing in the morning. We are filling up and probably the cheapest gas that we will have in Monroe. And this is the beginning of our maiden journey so uh, but I think we're gonna go through Missouri or something like that I'm not sure which way there's like three different ways to go but we'll go one of those ways and the weather looks a little rough right now but it's actually smooth sailing from here on out so I'm gonna give you guys kind of an overview of what we're seeing I've got a tack is what it looks like to me and the cars currently at 700 rpm <laughs> um, I've got temp and I've got battery I don't have uh, oil or fuel so we're maxed out on fuel right now. We don't have a speedometer, but that's why I'm gonna use my phone. And my dad's got the speakers <laughs> bumping there. And because the headlight switch is kind of shitty, we wired this up and a massive steering wheel that almost breaks your balls. So this should be pretty smooth. And uh, like I said, we'll just use GPS to tell us how fast we're going. We already ran into our first issue and are back, thanks to us being uh, larger people. <laughs> the drive shaft is now hitting the uh, the center of the the drive shaft tunnel. So um, we now have to raise. The, the car actually sits looks like it's sitting way too low. I don't know what happened there. We have a lot of shit in the car too. That looks looks way lower than it was. So maybe it's spinning on the rear shocks. But we're gonna bring the whole car up a, an inch. Okay, so we have lifted up the shocks. Thankfully, the QA ones make it really easy. See that wear and tear on the. That's, we were feeling that. And you can see, <laughs> there it is hitting the stock body. So our fat asses weighed that down. So what I'm gonna also do, four, five, six. So six on compression and rebound. So that way it isolates a little more. The car is super soft. So I, I had opened them all the way to, to try and test it and never got back to it. So I added four revolutions. And so you can see if you go too far, they're going to touch the, our new exhaust, but that's because we're sitting on the jack. We drop it back down, we should end up somewhere like that. And now we've got up and down and no drive shaft hitting. So we have made it, what, 150 feet, <laughs> 150 miles. <laughs> and we used 10.7 gallons of fuel. So, so far, so good. Go ahead and make sure nothing's wrong here. I didn't hear anything but you never know. Checking the oil. All oh, other fluids looking good. Nothing was making noises or doing anything weird or suspicious. Basically full. Okay, I'm gonna firm up the rear shocks a little bit more because we're still getting a little bit of bounce and it hits. So that's the last thing I'm gonna do. Okay, so I bought some gummy bears. They were on sale uh, right before our trip and they've been sitting in the car. On the floor. On the floor.
Oh my god. <laughs> One <laughs> giant I have gummy, to. gummy bear. Oh, that is hot. <laughs> that is delicious. <laughs> and gross at the exact same time. film much today because it is raining and driving this car in the rain not on drag slicks but you know it's funny the Mickey Thompson ET street uh, and strip tires they're 300 tread wear they they've been phenomenal and then I got some random mass coopers in the rear but again the car hasn't been sliding at all I've been avoiding uh, anything where it's like standing rain tons of lightning and tons of wind as we make our way now to Amarillo Texas so we detoured completely because uh, Tyson with the 12 rotor just it was we just had a lot of fun a lot uh, of fun that I can eventually share with you guys uh, and some you know kind of world first now. three two one go oh! we're gonna try and uh, rest for the night in Amarillo and then uh, we'll see we'll see if the last thousand miles to the shop um, can be split up into two days because my ass hurts we finally have our first problem here in Albuquerque and it's not trying to find meth this is a little bit more painful if I go ahead and just key it on you hear the, the fuel pumps so, and then it'll start going That's not good. This is maturity. Maturity knowing that if we keep going, this car is going to shit the bed. That fuel pump is going to seize. I'm running one of the biggest race pumps in the world as a daily driver for, uh, oh, it's been over 2,000 miles of highway driving so far between this and Kentucky. And so I'm, I'm throwing it in the towel because what's gonna happen is if we go for another half hour or so, it's going to break down. I, I, know, I know what's going on with the pump. And then we're gonna come back here and be hours behind and uh, everybody's gonna be closed. So what we're gonna do is go over to a U-Haul. I've been avoiding that for a long time because I got that trailer, but we're gonna go rent a truck and trailer and get the last leg of the trip done all just now. I mean, we made 80%, 70% of the trip. It just needs to make another two miles to U-Haul and we're good to go. A funny little side note, um, I went up a really, I went up a really steep hill and uh, went to roll backwards and it actually wedged the, the bottom of our brand new super clean custom exhaust pipes. Yeah, we're gonna take this thing over to U-Haul and, and finish the rest of the journey. We'll load her up, try not to hit the shitty AutoZone O'Reilly's pipes and uh, get her the rest of the way. You guys are helping finalize it. Just uh, getting our bags out of here and putting <laughs> I almost should have rented one from Michigan. I could have moved more shit back to the, uh, the shop, but nope. Yeah, Albuquerque it is. Our chariot awaits, and sadly we're carrying nothing in this. <laughs> just nothing. It's just for that. I try to get in a truck, but, but yeah, now we have proper AC, full seats with everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be so surprised if this is actually uncomfortable. What if the speedometer works? The speedometer will work? <laughs> I got so used to using Waze just to see its speedometer. This, uh, not so much. This is not how I planned on getting it here, but we did it overnight and then just cashed out in the shop for now. But I'm gonna go ahead and move the C8 out and then throw this in there. I'm not, we'll see if the thing fires up. The fuel pump sometimes seizes, sometimes works. <laughs> and 100% made it here because it's not relying on just the fuel pump working. So this is the moment of curiosity right now, is to see if the pump primes. Uh, it sounds it sounds completely normal. This is a pretty exciting little piece. My dad is working on the windows and the manual regulators for him. This is my work. <laughs> it's all floppy. That's actually literally how the car was. And uh, let me show you what he's done. Now, there is one video online that has 150 views, maybe 154 views, and it's about how to do this. And the guy sardine cans the whole damn door. He, look at this. 
Oh, wow. You know, instead of replacing everything, I mean, you gotta replace some of the consumable parts, but that's, that's pretty damn nice. And if you guys recall, before my dad, this door, as soon as you opened up, <laughs> would drop like three <laughs> inches, and you'd have to hold it by this part to get it in. My drive is only 50% of this man's drive. And look at this, he's, this isn't his car. <laughs> he's I just want to make sure it goes back together yeah. correctly. He's not, he's not even getting paid for this. This is kind of a standard process for all cars. The other video, where did the guy cut? He cut this all out to drop this, and then he cut back here to get the regulator. Yesterday, we did the passengers, and we found out you can leave this, loosen this up, and the regulator is kind of like playing operation. You have to get it down. This does get in the way, but it's in, out, back, forth, and then it comes out through this hole. That's awesome. Yeah, so you guys will see that whole process. My dad widened my hole. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, uh, what, what did you do to, to get this accessible? Well, this was a lot easier. When, when we did yesterday's, we reached in here and actually took off these three bolts and screws and stuff to get that rail off. We ended up taking off this, but as you can see, we took off nothing today. Loosen these vertical rails. It's got one bolt on the bottom and one bolt here. We loosen that. Loosen this vertical rail. These are mounted underneath, these little felt wipers. We took those off, which widened the hole. And the rubber piece went here, there, and the other one is over here. So once we had that out, the piece of glass pulled straight out. It's a little bit of a manipulation. So then now you can get to the, the crank that soldier boy. Right, yeah, what I'll do now is I'll take out what's left. And then this comes here. And this is the interesting part. It's like a couple back and forth until I can get this. Oh, there you go. Oh, no. In the new pieces, we're gonna have to use a ball peen hammer. So even though it doesn't look like the kit is correct, it is. When you first see this, you're thinking, well, shit. <laughs> they, look, they don't look like they're gonna, watch out. I'm throwing, at the a, I'm throwing a hot dog down the hallway. I assume. Okay. <laughs> it draws a picture. Now time to clean it up. Get rid of all that old grease. Yeah, and as long as my dad doesn't make me hold the flashlight for him while we're doing this, I'll be okay. <laughs> Don't tell Rob, but I might have overdid it on the synthetic Valvoline. So, if you start seeing grease on the window um, and it doesn't come off, I might have... Uh, Overdid it. As you can see, I put the four bolts in. I think that's always a waste watching that. What I also did is this is part of the regulator mechanism. I just put some tie wraps here so it kind of can become a one-man show. With this kind of held in position, it keeps it relatively horizontal so that the rail stays on the two slides. I would also recommend, since this is already torn apart, to vacuum this out. And this is a perfect time to lubricate the door opening mechanism and the lock. So what I've done so far is I replaced this one with the new components. You may think, as you look at this, that you got kind of let down, that the kit's not correct. Because when you take this off, the glass is sandwiched between this nut and this piece of plastic. You can get rid of all of this, put the screw back in here, and this nut expands. So you can slip it in here. Oh, wow. As you start putting this in, you'll see this will expand just like this, and it holds itself in. You get the spin, the motion, but this doesn't pull out. So it's one less component. So I was kind of stressing out about this earlier, but I just realized how I'm going to be able to repay my dad for helping me with all this. <laughs> and, uh... You found the quarter? Luck, 
<laughs> Luck to have it. 1984. Somebody <laughs> paid for their McDonald's meal five dollars and twenty-five cents. <laughs> Let me get you another quarter. Now he did it. No, it's gone. <laughs> oh my god. It was worse on the other side, but there's supposed to be a hole there? I'm assuming for drip, like not sand. What the heck? Oh. <laughs> so I cleaned it up a little bit, have all the new components on. And what we'll see is if we can get this back how we got it out now. Everything solid and what ends up happening is you have a solid window that the only reason it's moving is because of the felt pads and the rubber pads but it's installed as my dad's time here has come to a close five days later thanks to Delta I've wanted him to drive at least one of these two cars and I think it's this one <laughs> so my dad gets to be the first person in my family at least to properly drive this including me <laughs> driver's license says motorcycle only no race cars <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, where's your scca license sir i got nothing yeah. uh the seat belt's up i thought <laughs> <What? Are you sure? laughs> complaining complaining yeah. how do we yeah. get that out can you, you buy don't. a seat belt <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no. okay so that's one half the other half is on your side you see that if there's a fire I really need you guys. Yeah. This <laughs> well, you got one. It's it, it's a lot harder to put on than take off. There is fire suppression in the car. So. Yeah, that's true. Don't press it. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Don't press the red, that red button. That one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 My knees got weak when you. When you... Okay, so we'll, let's see. Oh bullet. boy. Yeah. This is like. Click, click, click. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate roller coasters. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was an insane. Here, hold this. That was an insane amount of instantly uh, badass. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you that that car feels safe though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like ass. outside, but that thing, that when I came, yeah. when I came and gave it gas here, it's yeah. fishtailed. Yeah. I just pulled the wheel and it just. It does exactly what you wanted. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that was a blast. We were all I mean, you, you couldn't hear us because of the explosions, but we were all giggling like little girls. <laughs> that uh, was unexpected. I thought he'd be more afraid, um, timid, and so now I'm afraid and timid. I gotta restore the balance. Because these guys are all going to leave Team Dom and join Team Dom. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
Yeah, yeah, that's like a rally. It's a rally thing. <laughs>